testimony uh, versus theory. Brian Hartman has testimony based on his NFL production. Yep. Does that make it easier to find what he's saying? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, just because, like I said, he's dominated at that level. You know what I mean? Um, so, if you're going to listen to a guy who's experienced in the same position as, as you, you know, he's been through what we're, what we're going through. And um, so, I mean, it makes it easier, you know, to believe and, you know, trust in what he's saying. Paris, every offseason, I think the fans get mad because the NCAA video game can't exist anymore. Right. And one of the ideas is to treat you guys like Olympic athletes, where you guys can be paid to be in a video game, you guys can do a shoot deal, you can sign autographs, whatever. Right. For a guy like you who has a pro skill set that will be paid to play football at some point, does that idea appeal to you, even though it wouldn't be in your time if it were to come to Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah definitely. That, I mean, that would be pretty cool. I mean, I even, I even say it all the time, because I, I mean, I miss that, that video game. Like, like people, like, People in my generation, like we work hard and you know play football just so we could be in NCAA football. And I mean, when it ended, it was kind of you know crushing. But I mean, I say bring the game out now and just give every college football player a free copy. I mean, that's, that's, and you don't need to pay me; just give me a free copy of the game. So. <laughs> no, but I think it would be pretty cool for sure. Paris, I know that this spring, uh, Urban brought in a speaker to talk to you guys about mental health, and that's kind of something that's been a bigger part of that Real Life Wednesdays program. Just curious from your perspective, how much have you seen that become a bigger part of that program over the course of your time here, and how important do you think it is for you guys to be able to talk about those things openly with your team? Yeah, I think it's huge. Um, it's, gotten, it's gotten bigger you know, over the years since I've been here. Um, but it's huge for us just because it brings us it brings us that much closer. Um, you think you, you you think you're close, but until you open up like that um, and experience uh, you know stories um, from guys' personal struggles and personal experiences, um, that's what brings it. That's what makes it special. You know what I mean? Just because you can be with a guy for four years, um, think you know him, but he's struggling at that point in time, and you've never known. But that 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 moment when you know we shared all experiences. I mean, it just in that moment you can see the team getting closer. So I mean, it's just it's just a different experience. What uh, what makes the Michigan Ohio State game so intense and uh, meaningful in your opinion? Uh, well, just being an Ohio kid growing up in Akron, uh, you know, I was kind of brought up to you know hate hate that team. Uh, so I mean, I I was around the the rivalry. I was aware. I watched it all the time. Uh, but I mean. I think you have to be, you know, from Ohio or from, you know, Ann Arbor to, you know, really understand the, like, the true meaning of the of, of game. Because um, we look at it as the biggest rivalry of, of all sports, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I think it's just something internally that uh, that means means the same to everybody who participates. As a player, was there a specific moment where you really understood the magnitude of it? Um, yeah, I, I, I think so. I think, you know, Honestly, when I stepped on campus, uh, just because um, we, we prepare for that game, you know, in the offseason, you know, we we do um, a, a drill during the offseason that's called the Team of North Drill, where we do uh, uh, sets of push-ups, sit-ups, you know, crunches, whatever, to how many days we play that team. So, I mean, if we're doing that, preparing for that game that early, I mean, obviously, you know, it's a big deal. I asked... Uh... Isaiah about Dwayne Haskins throw against yeah. Michigan and how he was able as a freshman to come in and make that kind of pressure factor out. Mm -hmm. And he said it's because of the training that we go through. Yeah. And we don't get nervous because yeah. we've been put through the ring. Can you describe what that's, that process is like, how hard it is? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, well, our coaches, um, they really take pride in, you know, putting us in adverse situations, uh, you know, when we're not, you know, in the game, you know what I mean? So whether it's um, in the weight room, you know, on the practice field, um, or even in the classroom, they try to make they try to make things so hard that you know um, that that you're, you're you're used to it when you get to the game. You know what I mean? Um, it's not your first time seeing that uh, adversity. Um, so I think just um, creating that that adverse vibe and that adverse um, you know atmosphere. Uh, that we just get used to it, you know what I mean? But you can't simulate being in the big house, or a hundred or whatever thousand people, in that situation. Yeah. How hard do they make it? What do they do to make it right. so hard in practice? I mean, you, you can't, like you said, you can't, you can't emulate that, but, uh, I mean, <laughs> you can come close with a Coach Mick workout, for sure. Um, just, 
I mean, the, the intensity that we have in the weight room, I think it's, it's second to none. Um, you know, the things that we do, uh, and I don't want to give away all our sauce, you know what I mean, but uh, I think that they make it just so hard that it, it's it's not exact adverse situation, but it's it's some type of adversity, you know what I mean? Um, so if you get to a game and experience adversity, uh, you know how to bounce back just because it's adversity, you know what I mean? So Were you on the field for that play, for the Austin back catch? Yeah, I was, yeah. When that play was called, you knew, you knew the kind of throw he was going to have to make. Yeah. Did you think a freshman doing this, or did you think no problem? Um, I had no problem just because um, Dwayne had he had he has confidence in himself. You know what I mean? He's not he's not a guy that you know second guesses himself at all. I mean, he has extreme confidence in himself, and I knew that in that moment, if we made that play, if we completed that play, then it, his confidence would go through the roof, and then he would be able to continue and ride out the rest of the game. With this spring when we got to go off season of practice, Jalen Harris really kind of popped into mm -hmm. What have you seen out of him this summer? And is he someone you see could see making a contribution? Um, yeah, Jalen's definitely a guy I can see making contribution. Um, he's a guy that needed to, you know, as a freshman, needed to get over that hump of um, being tired um, and being able to play when he's tired. Um, because honestly, um, even Jalen as a freshman, um, when he's fresh, you know, he's ready to go. First couple of plays of the series. Um, he's 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 a competitor. He can compete with the best in the room. Um, this is when he gets fatigued, and you know that's when he shuts down and mentally he shuts down. Um, but last spring, um, he really worked on that and was able to, you know, uh, push through being tired, push through being that fatigue, and um, he knew that, that that's his main weakness. Um, you know, the guys told him, coaches told him, so he, he really made a point to work on it, and he got better. What is he, 6'5"? What kind of weapon is that as, for an offensive receiver that big? Yeah. Have right. There. right. He's a he, he's a 6'5 guy that can move well and that can actually, you know, run. Um, he's efficient in and out of his top ends. You don't see that a whole lot with a uh, 6'5 guy who wears a size, you know, 14, 15 tie shoot, you know what I mean? Um, so, he, I mean, he's a, he's a different athlete. Um, just like Ben Victor, you know what I mean? They're two different guys that um, have that elite skill set that not many receivers possess. I was going to ask you about Ben, because he's a guy that people talk about as being t as talented as anybody on the other roster. Mm -hmm. What have you seen from him from the end of last season until now? Um, just just figuring figuring out himself, figuring out um, the things that he figuring out the things that he needs to do. Um, you know, to be the best that he can be. Um, I said earlier that Ben was kind of a guy that just was going through the motions. He knew he was talented, um, kind of relied on talent to get him through. Um, but his talent, don't get me wrong, his talent is top top of the top, and he, he can be one of the best. But he's, he's kind of figuring out that it's, it's going to take a little bit more. It's going to take me, it's going to take my work ethic. It's going to take me doing things that other guys aren't doing. Um, he's all just figuring it out, putting it together. Close to get there? Yeah, he's definitely close. Um, I think it helped a lot just uh, with the guys in the room being on him. Because um, I I kind of, you know, mess, mess with him every day, like saying, just like Ben, like, you could be one of the greatest. Like, and he, he always kind of thought I was playing around, but he's starting to understand that, that I was being serious. I'm saying, Ben, you got the most talent out of anybody on the team. Like, you can be this, you can be that. You compare, if Ben gets there, you can compare him to some of the greatest that play right now. So, Paris, you're getting ready to go through training camp one last time. And now that you've done it so many times, I just wonder if you can explain how awful it is. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm seriously, like, like right. how mentally terrible, yeah. how physically demanding, how how ugly, how, how nervous do you feel when yeah. you think about those three weeks in August? Yeah. Well, now, uh, since I've been through it a lot, you know, I'm kind of immune to the to the conditions of it. But um, it's it's physically tiring, it's emotionally tiring. I mean, now, you know, we don't have two days anymore, so, I mean, it's a little bit better on some of the guys' bodies. But... Um, I mean, it's a lot. I mean, you wake up uh, 6.30 a.m., you go to the facility, you get to the facility 6.45, you're at the facility from 6.45 to almost 10 o'clock at night. Um, you're not going home, you're going, you're going to a hotel, uh, you know, with your teammates. You see the same guys, uh, same people for, you know, two weeks straight. Um, you're kind of blinded to the outside world. You're not really aware of what's going on in the outside world. You lose track of the days, you lose track of the time. I mean, it's kind of, you get in this routine, um, you know, everyone does it, but I mean, it's it's, it's miserable. It's, it's hard. It's hard to get through. That's why I said, um, at a time like this, you want to get around the freshmen because they're about to experience the hardest and toughest time of their career. Freshman camp is no joke, and um, you know, you make it through that. You know, you persevere and keep pushing, but it's, it's a lot for sure. Chris, what would you say to uh -huh. the people? What you say? 
Oh, okay. What would you say to the people who say Kendall Sheffield is the fastest player on the tour? Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know, no comment. I mean, he's fast, but I mean, no comment. <laughs> Victor could have five top 15s. How much will this week in your mind factor into the playoff race, the matchups, just the, the overall evolution of the yeah. playoff race? Where's the yeah. Big Ten factor? I mean, I, I definitely think we should be represented. Uh, out of the four teams that's in the college playoff, one of them should be a Big Ten team. Um, I think we're one of the, arguably one of the, uh, you know, the top conference, you know, in the entirety of college football. So, um, I mean, it's, it's tough to see the conference left out. Um, in the past year, but I mean, that's two champions. How yeah. is that? I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's it's tough because you know the way we look at it. You know, our whole saying is get to Indy. Um, you know, and we feel like if we get to Indiana, you know, I mean, Indianapolis and you know win the Big Ten championship, then everything else will take care of itself. So, um, you know, and to see that not happen, you know, it's kind of it's kind of heartbreaking. But I mean, I'm cool. All right, cool. Thanks.